the suggestion by President Muhammadu Buhari that the United States government should consider relocating the headquarters of its Africa command, Africa, AFRICOM, from Germany to Africa, is generating reactions. It has thrown up an age-old debate over the capability of the Americans to solve Africa's problems without undermining the continent's sovereignty. In this report, defense correspondent Sifon Asien takes a look at AFRICOM, its activities in Africa, and what it portends for Nigeria. Africa Command, AFRICOM was created on the 6th of February 2007 by former President George W. Bush. It was activated as a full-fledged unified combatant command on the 1st of October 2008 and structured to have responsibility for all African countries except Egypt, which remained under the supervision of the Central Command. Prior to AFRICOM, U.S. military involvement in Africa was divided among three geographical commands, European Command, Central Command and the Pacific Command. Although Liberia was willing to host the AFRICOM headquarters, the sensitivity of having a foreign military facility with the attendant resources and assets on African soil made the U.S. government retain AFRICOM headquarters in Kelly Barracks, Stuttgart, Germany. Nonetheless, the U.S. government has continued to expand its presence in Africa with a drone base in Dirku and another in Agadez, both in Niger. These bases are home to armed Predator and Reaper drones. On the 31st of October 2020, the U.S. Africa Command carried out a mission using its elite special forces to rescue its national kidnapped by gunmen in Niger and taken across the border to Nigeria. The mission commanded by the U.S. President at the time is proof of the extent the American government would go in military operations. The suggestion by President Buhari in a recent virtual meeting with the Secretary of State that the United States government should consider relocating the headquarters of AFRICOM to Africa due to evolving security challenges is throwing up some debates. Frankly, I, I never imagined that in my lifetime I would hear a Nigerian president um, making such a demand given the opposition that um, you know was generated when the issue was mooted. Now, what this tells us is that in foreign relations, international relations, um, there is no permanent friend, it's only permanent interest. Lieutenant General Malou was the chief of army staff. Uh, there was an attempt for American uh, troops to be in Nigeria to assist uh, in securing and then uh, training uh, Nigerian personnel. You remember vehemently uh, 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 Malou rejected that, even though he was on, appointed by President uh, Obasanjo and in, under Obasanjo's government, but Malou rejected that proposal, believing that that will be, uh, amount to, like you said, Leo colonialism. Much of the debate centers on the benefit in tackling terrorism and other violent crimes. Critics have argued that hosting AFRICOM in Africa could undermine the sovereignty of African countries. That's why it's a double-edged sword. It could. Uh, assist in fighting Boko Haram and then uh, bringing it down to the barest level, most especially now that one of the big ally, one of our big uh, front, uh, uh, Idris Deby, uh, President Idris Deby of, of charge is dead. Now the creation of uh, a command by the U.S. is an, it's a projection of its foreign interest. What, what do the commands do? They help to achieve UN, U.S. foreign uh, policy objectives in a continent where the command is, is located. While AFRICOM has been linked to the U.S. strategy of countering global transnational crimes and efforts to protect democracies and human rights in Africa, it cannot be separated from the need to secure U.S. economic interests in Africa. A majority of our security challenges are homegrown. Um, they are governance-related issues. So there is no amount of uh, foreign presence that solves those uh, homegrown um, challenges. We need to own up to those problems, show up for ourselves, and address the root causes of the security challenges. The perception and the reality of marginalization, the political space that has been closed to certain uh, categories or individuals within the country. Former President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia said, 
AFRICOM should be seen as the end product of a significant strategic realignment a long time in the making, one where engagement with African nations is more than just a humanitarian cause. At the end of the day, there is a need for the Nigerian government to look inwards and address the development deficits, some of which contribute to the evolving security challenges, while looking beyond its shores for assistance. Sifon ACN, TVC News, Abuja.